I'm going to be doing a question from the 2000 AP Calculus test, and it's question number three. And this question says, the figure above shows a graph of f prime of x, the derivative of the function f, for a negative seven, or <laughs> for the interval negative seven to seven. The graph of f prime of, or f prime <laughs> has horizontal tangent at x equals negative three, x equals two, and x equals five, and a vertical tangent at x equals three. So part A asks us to find <clears throat> all values of x between negative 7 and 7 at which f attains a value or a relative minimum. And then we need to justify our answer. So by looking at the graph, we can find the critical numbers because we know the critical numbers are when um, f prime of x is equal to 0 or where it intersects with the x-axis. And we can visibly see that the critical numbers are at x equals negative 5, x equals negative 1, um, x and x equals 5. And since it's just relative, we don't need to use endpoints because that's what you use for the absolute. So in order to find which one is the <clears throat> relative minimum, let's make a number line representing the function f prime and put in here negative 5, negative 1, and 5, and find the values. So if we were to plug in a number that is less than negative 5, it would be a positive number just by looking at the graph. We can see that numbers <clears throat> that are less than negative 5 are positive. And if we look at the numbers in between negative 5 and negative 1, we can see that they are going to be negative. Just by looking at the graph, you can see that because we know that Values up here are positive and values down here are negative. So as you can see from there, from here to here, that's going to be a negative value. And from there to the left, it's going to be positive. So let's look at the next interval, which is negative 1 to 5. And we can see that those are also positive values. And from 5 up, we can see that that is also going to be positive. So I like to draw on a line representing the slope. So we can see that this is positive negative, positive. So we're trying to find the relative minimum and this indicates when you go from negative to positive that it's a, min a minimum. So x equals negative 1 is the relative minimum because the graph of f prime of x changes from negative to positive at that point. So let's go ahead and write that. So <clears throat> the relative is at x equals negative 1 because the graph of f prime changes from negative to positive. at this point. And that's all that you're going to need to do for part A. So let's go ahead and move to part B. And we can use some parts from part A on this. So part B asks us to find all values of x between negative 7 and 7, which f attains a relative maximum. And we need to justify our answer. So we basically did all the work that we needed to in part A, where we can see that the critical values are still going to be the same because we're still working with the same graph. But this time, we're looking for the maximum, a relative maximum, and we can see that that is going to be here at x equals negative 5. And that's because at this point, the graph of f prime shifts from positive to negative. So that's going to be our reasoning. So that's all that we need to write. So we can say relative minimum is at x, or I'm sorry, the rel relative maximum I was looking at, problem of a maximum, is at x equals negative 5, because the graph of f prime changes 
from positive to negative at this point. So that's how you find part B. So that's pretty simple to do part A and B. Let's move on to part C. <clears throat> part C says find all values for x in which um, the second derivative of f of x is less than 0. So we know that <clears throat> f prime of x, or f double prime of x, I'm sorry, is less than 0 when the slope of slope of f prime of x is negative. So if we look at the graph, we can see that the slope <coughs> of f prime of f, f prime of x is negative in these areas. So from here to here, and then from in these areas. So if we go back to <clears throat> what the beginning of the question said, it said that we have hor horizontal tangent lines at x equals negative 3, x equals 2, x equals 5, and a virgi vertical tangent at x equals 3. So we know that these are our um, points of inflection, and those are going to determine where <clears throat> the graph of f prime of x changes, so that's going to tell us when it's less than zero. Those are the points where it distinguishes when it will be less than zero or greater than zero. So we know that this cuts off at negative three because it says that that's one of our tangents, and this one at two because it also states that there, and this one's at five, and then it gives us that a vertical tangent is at three, so we can't have any values being exactly equal to three. Three, so we can't just have the section 2 to 5 as one of the uh, one of the times, or I guess one of the sections at which um, f double prime of x is less than 0 because there is no value of 3 in the graph of f prime of x, or f double prime of x. So let's go ahead and write this numerically so it makes a little bit more sense. So we know that <clears throat> f double prime of x is less than zero in these intervals. And so it's going to be from negative seven to negative three. And then we have from two to three. And then from three to five. And that is how you answer part C. So on to part D, it says, at what value of x for values from negative 7 to 7 does f attain an absolute minimum? And we need you to justify our answer. So we know that the absolute minimum is when you <coughs> plug your critical numbers and your endpoints back into the original function. And we know that the original function can be found by taking the integral of um, f prime. And we know that integral is the area under a curve. So we can simply find this by looking at the graph and finding, <coughs> finding when the area under the curve is largest or when the magnitude is the greatest. So we know that the um, absolute maximum can only be at points <clears throat> negative 5, negative 7, or 7, because it can only be at negative 5 from part A. When we look, we know that that's the only maximum of the critical numbers, or it could be an endpoint. So let's go ahead and write this down. So it can be at x equals negative 5, x equals negative 7, or x equals 7. So let's go ahead and look at the graph to find where the magnitude or the area under the curve is the greatest between these points. So at negative 5, we know that the area under the curve is shown by this purple part that I just shaded in, and that's going to be negative. So we can already tell that it's not going to be at negative 5 because over here is positive, and it's, just, it's not going to be at negative 5 because that's a negative area 
in the magnitude is much less than it is for over here at 7. So we know it's not going to be that. If we go ahead and look at the magnitude or the area under the curve at 7, let's shade this in and compare. We can see quite clearly that the area under the curve here is much greater than it is for negative 5 or even for negative 7. So this area right here is greater than any area that we're going to get with negative 7 or 7. So we can determine by looking at the graph and using our knowledge about integrals and that being um, how you find the original function and that giving you the area under the curve that the <clears throat> absolute maximum is going to be at 7. So let's go ahead and put this into words. Is at x equals 7 because <clears throat> At x equals 7, we know that um, that has the greatest magnitude of the four or of the three values. Well, its greatest magnitude change of the and this is how you solve part D of the 2000 AP calculus test question number three